Hello everyone, welcome to the video, Salt here. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Necromech Bone Widow and how to build her out. So, let us get into it. So, Bone Widow is one of the two Necromechs in the game that you can get. Um, typically people will start with Void Rig first, and then eventually you can get Bone Widow as well. Void Rig is a little bit more burst damage focused, where Bone Widow is a little bit more um, survival and longevity focused. Uh, Void Rig can also uh, have some like survivability and, and uh, longevity, but it really requires like almost robotic type reactions on his two. Uh, if you don't have that, he will eventually just die from attrition. Um, so Bone Widow's a little bit more uh, normally, uh, more of the, like the survival frame over Void Rig. Okay, <clears throat> so let's get into the mods on Bone Widow. Now, going over these mods, I want to make it clear that you can actually use most of these for Void Rig as well. So even though this is a Bo uh, Bone Widow specific video, you can use this mostly for Void Rig also. The only things that might change are the last three mod slots. So this, this, and this. And when I show the Iron Bride build, exact same thing. This, this, and this. These are the three things that will change. Everything else will basically stay the exact same for a Void Rig build. So let's go over uh, abilities first here, actually. So the first ability that Bone Widow has is Meat Hook. So you'll kind of lurch forward a bit grab an enemy, and that enemy will take a little bit of damage over time, but he's also going to heal you over time as well. He, you're going to, uh, like, leech his health, basically. So that's how she restores her health. And that's why uh, Bone Widow is a little bit more focused on longevity over Void Rig because of that. Void Rig has ways to become immune, just like Bone Widow does, but Void Rig doesn't have a great way to restore health. He basically just has to pick up energy, uh, not energy orbs, health orbs, and that's not a great way to restore health on a Necromech. So Bone Widow can restore health through Meat Hook. The next ability Bone Widow has is Shield Maiden. So Shield Maiden is invulnerability, just like uh, Void Rig's too. Now the difference is, is that Shield Maiden is directional invulnerability. It is not full invulnerability. Voidrig has full invulnerability. When you press Voidrig's 2, he's he's invulnerable 360. If enemies are shooting him from behind, he's still invulnerable. Voidrig, it is directional. You actually have to make sure you are somewhat uh, aiming in the direction where the enemies are shooting you, you from. Um, the other thing that is different here is that when Shield Maiden goes down, you cannot instantly cast it again. There is, I believe it's either a 10 or a 12 second wait for you to recast Shield Maiden. Now, that's a great time to be uh, using Meat Hook to restore your health that you might have lost. Um, but you do have that uh, time in between where you don't have your invulnerability up. So large spikes in DPS can kill Bone Widow. So you have to be careful with that. Firing Line. Firing line is going to kind of scoop enemies up in a in like a uh, it's about like a 180. It'll scoop enemies up and kind of pull them almost into a line. It's kind of like a V, like a, a really narrow V. It pulls them in, and it'll put them in the lifted status. It's very good CC. It's very good uh, for grouping enemies. For you know, if you have a, a, a necromech weapon that maybe has punch through or is an AOE, it's good for that. It's just a very good ability. And then finally, Bone Widow has Iron Bride. It's her fourth. This is a blade that Bone Widow pulls out, and it does a massive amount of melee damage. Uh, not really anything else to it other than that. It's a big, big sword she pulls out, does a lot of damage. Okay, let's go over the mods on her. So we're going to have Necromech Vitality for health. Necromech Steel Fiber for armor. Now, keep in mind... If you watch some of my other videos, I, I play a lot of health and armor frames, and I basically consider like 2,000 armor a must for Steel Path Endurance. 
And unfortunately, Bone Widow only has this. This is the only armor mod Bone Widow can get. And if we look here, she only has an armor of 960. Ugh. So you only have 76% damage reduction. Whereas with 2,000 armor, you're closer to that 90% damage reduction. So that's why Bone Widow does take a lot, a lot more damage than like a Warframe with 2,000 armor would take. Now she has a lot of she has a big health pool to be taking that damage, but it's still you could still die to heavy burst damage. Next here we have Necromech Repair. This is going to restore ten percent of your health every second for three seconds when your health drops below twenty percent. Um, this is great on both Void Rig and Bone Widow. Like I said, most of these mods will be the exact same between Bone. Bone Widow and Void Rig. So even if you don't have a Bone Widow yet, you can pretty much follow like 90-ish percent of this for Void Rig as well. Necromech Rage is going to convert 15% uh, of your damage on your health to energy. So that's free energy. So you don't have to worry about running around picking up energy orbs on the ground. You know, picking up energy orbs and picking up health orbs are not really great ways for Necromechs to restore those resources. So Necromech Rage is like, is like the premier energy restoration mod, basically. All right, now let's get into the shield mods here. Necromech re Redirection for 100% shield capacity. Necromech Deflection, this is going to make your shield uh, start recharging quicker and recharge faster. Necromech Augur, anytime you click an ability, a little bit of that uh, energy you spent is going to be converted into shields. So these three here just help you with the shields, basically. Um, Necromech Hydraulics, this is a little bit of an optional slot, but I think it's... I'm going to say it's optional because it's literally just jump height, but I feel like it's a little bit mandatory too. I don't know. Um, there's a lot of obstacles. Whether you're doing ISO vaults, if you're doing uh, Whispers content where you're uh, maybe doing uh, Elite Deep Archimedia or, you know, the survival or just anything on Whispers, really. There's a lot of, like, staircases that you can basically just bypass by just jumping over them um, with Necromech Hydraulics. I think it's really good. I think I think it's almost mandatory. Uh, even though it is like just jump height, I feel like it's almost mandatory. Now, something to know about Necromech Hydraulics. If you notice, everything on this build is fully maxed out except for Necromech Hydraulics. It, it only has one star. And it's because it's personal taste. So a three star Necromech Hydraulics has you jumping into like the stratosphere. You're going to be whacking your head on the ceilings. Maybe you like that. Maybe the content you play, uh, like maybe you're using it in open world, for instance. And in the open world, you don't have to worry about whacking your head on, on ceilings and stuff. And so you can have a fully maxed out Necromech Hydraulics. But personally, I feel like a one star Hydraulics is what I like. It gets me to, it lets me jump and bypass all those staircases on like the content that I do. And it doesn't let me like hit my head on, on ceilings and stuff. So, but that's something to kind of test around with. Um, if you only have one Necromech Hydraulics, I would just say upgrade it slowly and then kind of test as you go. Or if you have multiple Necromech Hydraulics, maybe, you know, rank one up completely to three and then rank one at one and, you know, use, use them both for different kind of content. Okay, Necromech Intensify. Um, this, uh, this is going to be useful on both Bone Widow and Void Rig. So again, this is one of the mods that works for both of them. So Intensify is going to give you more um, health regeneration, or more of that health will be converted uh, to, to your health from Meat Hook. Uh, it's going to increase the damage multiplier on your Shield Maiden, so you get a little bit more invulnerability. Um, I don't believe it does anything to your 3, and it makes your 4 a little bit stronger as well. It helps Iron Bride do a little bit more uh, uh, elemental damage. Okay, now we get to the last three mods. And the last three mods are kind of like the flex slots. They're, they're optional. And there's a few different things you can do. So I want to talk about stretch first here. So Necromech stretch is really only useful for one ability, and that's the three. The three normally, I believe, let me pull this all over. I think it's 25 meters. If I take this off, 25 meters. So normally the firing line will will grab and scoop up and group enemies within 25 meters. I feel like that's good enough, but if you want, you can use Necromech Stretch and it'll 
increase it out to, what is it, 36? 36 meters there. So Necromech Stretch, that's basically the only thing it affects there. It doesn't really do anything for Shield Maiden, doesn't really do anything for Meat Hook. Um, actually, it might affect, like, the Lurch range, but that's not really that big of a deal anyway. You can, you can scoop up enemies easily, regardless. Okay. Um, the other one that's good is Necromech Enemy Sense. This basically just gives you uh, enemy radar. Necromech Thrusters. So something that I, I find a lot of people are a little bit unaware of is like, what the hell is that engine? You know, and it, even me, I didn't really know what engine was for, for a long time from playing this game. I was like, I don't know what the hell engine is. So engine is basically your stamina bar when you're in your Necromech. And there's different things that take stamina. There's uh, hovering. Hovering will take stamina. Sprinting will take stamina. Doing the super sprint where you're kind of like, you know, boosting forward. It takes a shitload of stamina. Uh, and so that's what the engine is. The engine is effectively the stamina bar that's in the bottom middle of your screen. So all these, there's other um, engine mods here. Let me see here. Uh, refuel, for instance. Engine replenish. That basically is stamina replenishment. So it, get, it, it replenishes a little bit quicker. So anytime you see engine, it's, it's your stamina bar, basically. So... Um, Necromech Thrusters is really good. It just double it doubles your, your stamina bar. I think that's usually good enough. But there are cases to use um, other ones. So let's go over to Hover Efficiency. So again, hovering takes stamina. So when it says Hover Efficiency, that's stamina efficiency while you're hovering. Just, just so you know, because it, it is a little bit confusing. Okay, so there's a little bit of a combo wombo with Bone Widow because there's there's different ways to play Bone Widow. You can play Bone Widow while using Iron Bride as a melee Necromech, but I actually don't play Bone, bone Widow most of the time like that. I play in bone, bone Widow as a ranged uh, Necromech. And if you're going to play Bone Widow as a ranged Necromech, there's another um, kind of combo that you can do. I don't necessarily like this combo because it's a little weird. I'll explain it. It is using, let me take off Stretch and Enemy Sense for now. It's using Aviator and Necromech Drift. So Necromech Aviator is going to reduce the damage you take while you're airborne by 40%. And Necromech Drift is going to give you that hover efficiency. So you're able to hover for longer uh, without you know using so much uh, stamina or engine power. So... These, in combination, will change your playstyle on Bone Widow to be a little bit more of like a, a hovering turret, almost. You're going to want to be hovering most of the time with it. Um, it's a little bit more of like a stationary type of play. It, you, you can move very slowly while you're hovering, so you can't move very quickly. Um, like, extremely slowly, I mean. So... It helps for survivability. It absolutely helps for survivability. It's a valid way to play. I just feel like it's a little bit of an annoying way to play for me. Like, I don't always want to be, like, hovering. Also, certain tile sets have really low ceilings, so it's hard to hover in certain tile sets. So this is a very good combo, and maybe this is a combo that you like using. But me, myself, I, I'm not a big, huge fan of this combo. So I'm going to take it off here. And I'm going to put my, uh, what was it, stretch? It was some. It was stretch and... Uh, Radar, I believe. There's a radar, and there's stretch. Okay. So um, those are good combos there. Now this is more for a gun platform bone widow. Let me let me go over the iron bride bo iron bride bone widow, the melee bone widow. So I'm going to click over to iron bride here. And again, exactly the same mods except for the last three. The last three are what changes. So for the iron bride, you're using, of course. Bone Widows 4, Iron Bride. And so you're going to be using the melee mods. So we have Necromech Pressure Point, which is melee damage. Necromech Fury, which is melee attack speed, 40%, which is really good. Because on the actual Iron Bride itself, the strongest attack speed mod there is, is a 10%. I don't even know why that's even in the game. 10% is not even uh, noticeable. So you can get your attack speed through uh, your Necromech mod here. 
and Necromech Reach for plus one melee range. This one is a little bit optional for an Iron Bride build, just because you can get plus three melee range on Iron Bride itself. So like, yeah, you can eke out plus one more melee range, but you might also want to use this slot for like more engine power if you wanted it, like if you wanted to go for that engine power mod. All right. And that's pretty much the mods for Bone Widow. Those are the two different ways, whether you're doing the melee Bone Widow or the gun platform Bone Widow. And now what I'm going to show you next is Iron Bride and how to build out Iron Bride for Bone Widow. So again, Iron Bride is Bone Widow's specific uh, melee weapon that Bone Widow takes out on her fourth ability. I have two different builds for Iron Bride. I have a Viral build and a Corrosive build. They're similar, but a little bit different. So we're going to go with Cutting Edge for melee damage. Hey, thanks for following, 2-Bit. 2-Bit Enema just followed. We're going to go with uh, Cutting Edge for melee damage. Tempered Blade for crit chance. Bleeding Edge for crit damage. Critical Meltdown for more crit chance. So this is another crit chance mod uh, that came out recently. So this, this wasn't in the game for a long time. Um, but it's a very good one. You know, uh, We're not necessarily trying to put radiation on the weapon, but hey, I'll take that 60% crit chance. So that's why we're using it there. Next, we're going to have Extend. This is the plus three, plus three melee range. Astral Slash, plus 90 Slash. This is going to increase your uh, Slash weighting as well. And then for Viral, we're going to use the 6060s. Infectious Injection for a 6060 Toxin. And Cryo Coating for the 6060 uh, Cold to make Viral together. So that's going to increase this up to a 33% melee uh, status chance. Now, I, I want to explain like a little bit of the differences with melee compared to like ranged weapons. So melee doesn't have multi-shot. So 33% is basically 33% of the time that you go to whack something. So one out of three hits. One out of three hits will choose one of these statuses to roll. So that doesn't sound very good. Um, but... The reason we go with Viral while using the 6060s is because Viral, not all Viral procs are equal. Viral stacks up to 325% um, damage boost to health, 25% each time, but the very first Viral proc counts as 4. So the very first Viral proc is 100%. So we actually only need a, a one viral proc on an enemy, and then we get a 100% damage boost. So it makes it a little bit better. You know, we don't really care about stacking statuses. We just want a, a, like, literally a single viral proc. So that's why it, it's worth it to, to do it like this with the viral. So let's go over corrosive now. Very similar. Actually, almost exactly the similar, except when we get to the uh, element mods here. So for the element mods, we're using Poisonous Sting, and we're using Conductive Blade to make Corrosive. Now, why aren't we using the 6060s? And I'll, I'll try to explain that. So with elements, there's, <clears throat> there's two different things. There's vulnerabilities and resistances, and then there's the proc itself and what the proc actually does. Okay? So when we look at, at Corrosive, um, normally things like Grenier are vulnerable to Corrosive. Okay, that's great. Now, what does the proc do? Because that's a different thing. You know, you have the, the resistances and vulnerabilities. Now you have the proc. Well, the proc of corrosive strips armor. That's great if you can get a crap load of procs, but if you can't get a crap load of procs, it's basically not doing anything for you. And so for the corrosive build, we don't really care about stacking corrosive because we only have a 30. Actually, on this one, because we're not using the 66, we have a 15. But even if we had, if we, even if we were using the 66s and we had a 33% chance, it's very unlikely that we're going to be getting 10 stacks of corrosive on enemies uh, before they die. So we're not building it for that. We're not building it to actually produce the proc. We're building it just to have corrosive on the weapon, so we're doing more damage to the enemies that are vulnerable to corrosive. Where in Viral's case, <clears throat> Viral does have enemies that are still, you know, vulnerable to it or resistant to it. Actually, in, in Whisper's content, there's a lot of enemies that are uh, resistant to it. But for Viral, the proc is really powerful. The proc is that 
damage boost to health. So, and again, we, we really only care about getting one proc, because all we need is one proc for the 100% damage boost. So, I mean, if, if I go over the, the viral stat here, it'll actually tell, uh, tell you right there, too. So, viral status effects increase damage to health up to 325% with multiple stacks for a short duration. Um, what it doesn't say is, is like I said before, the first stack uh, or the first proc counts as four. Um, it gives you a 100% effect. So, that's how you build Iron Bride. Um, you can... Either of these, either of these is completely fine. For Whispers content, Corrosive will probably be better because uh, enemies and Whispers are pretty much all uh, vulnerable to Corrosive. They are resistant to Viral, but the Viral proc itself kind of makes it equal-ish. Like, it kind of ends up, like, equal and out. But I, I would rather just use Corrosive at that point because Corrosive is just going to be a, a, a straight benefit. <clears throat> all right. So that is how you build out uh, Bone Widow. Um, you use whatever whatever um, Archon you want to use. I have the Cortez on right here because I did a, a video on the Cortez. Uh, but there's a lot of Archons that are actually really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into a quick map and just show uh, showcase like some of the abilities and how they work. So it's important nowadays to uh, have a... Necromech built out, whether that's Bone Widow or, or Void Rig. I'll make a Void Rig video as well. It's going to be very similar to this build. Like I said, 90% uh, of the mods are the same. Now, in Lewis Circulus, I'm only going to have two minutes of my Necromech. You, you can't take your Necromech for, um, like, forever, basically. You're limited on your time with it. So I do want to show off these things about uh, Bone Widow here. So first, we have her shield. I probably should have started off with her one instead of her two. But you have her shield, you press two, and you have invulnerability in the direction that you're facing. But it will take damage. If you look at the top right, now it's down to 2,000 health. If I take some more damage, it'll... Oh, now it's gone. And if you look, I have a 10-second duration where I can't recast my shield. So I if I press my 2 button right now, I can't take it out. Okay. Look. Oh, 10, 10 seconds is down. Now I can press that, that shield again. I, I take my shield out. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to go over is Meat Hook. If you press 1, you lurch forward and you grab an enemy. And that's going to do a little bit of damage over time to the enemy, but it's also going to heal you. It's basically like sucking his health force out of him. So it's a good way to restore your health. Now, the thing with that is you can't have a uh, meat hook and the shield active at the same time. If you notice, they're, they're the same arm it's it's working on, basically. If you press meat hook again, you also launch him. It does it does okay damage. It's it's more of like the, uh, the health gaining effect is what's useful about it. I might have to do this in two goes because I, I only have two minutes on this. <laughs> Okay, the three is this guy right here. You kind of group enemies up. See see how I said it's not really a perfect line? It's like more of a V that it tries to get him in. Um, and it puts him in the lifted status. So it's a very good uh, uh, CC ability. And grouping ability too. Although it doesn't group him like perfectly. It, it kind of... Yeah, they're, they're in like a little V, I guess. I don't even know if it's a V really. Okay, and um, Iron Bride is next. I am going to have to get some energy. I haven't really been killing enemies. Let's see here, I have 20 seconds. Okay. So Iron Bride is going to be your sword. And then you can get to chopping. I only have 10 seconds left on my Necromech, so I'm going to I'm gonna do this one more time. I'm going to come in. I'm just going to show the engine mechanics off. But that's what Iron Bride is. Iron Bride will um, suck a little bit of your energy as you're doing it. So um, keep that in mind. You will have like your energy suck while you have Iron Bright out. So if you run out of energy, you might put Iron Bright away. Um, but it's not a huge energy suck that Iron Bright gives you. It's pretty reasonable. Um, oh, what I was saying about Deep Archimedia too. Like uh, Deep Archimedia, there's a lot of RNG to it. And certain weeks, you can kind of eliminate that RNG by just literally using your Necromech. So there, there was a week I had where I had absolute uh, trash tier picks. And what I did was I just used my, my Necromech. Because I, I know I have a good Necromech art gun. Now, there are weeks that you can't take your Necromech out. And that kind of sucks. 
All right, engine mechanics. Uh, just for people that don't know, because this is something that it took me a little bit to, to learn too, because I was like, what the hell is engine? So if you look on the bottom, there's a stamina bar, right? And if I jump up and I hover, you see that stamina bar starts depleting. So hovering takes stamina. If I walk normally, it's okay, and it'll recharge. But if I sprint, you see it starts depleting. And now if I do the super sprint, it's going to deplete uh, even further. Watch. So that's the engine mechanics. Uh, the engine mechanics are, are basically your stamina bar. So that's all I was going to show there. So we went over the uh, abilities. We went over the, the engine mechanics for it. That should be pretty much it for the Bone Widow. The Bone Widow and the Void Rig are both very good Necromechs. They're, they're good at, at um, I believe they're good at different things. So Void Rig has a lot of burst damage potential with his fourth. And he could technically stay invulnerable all the time. The problem is that if you do not immediately press your, your two button as soon as it falls down, there's potential for him to start taking a little bit of chip damage in between pressing his two. And because he has no way of restoring that health, he will eventually die through attrition. You know, I, I just wanted to make it clear because I know there's going to be, be people that are like, well, actually, he can stay invulnerable all the time. Yes, he can. But you have to have like robot-like reflexes. And I feel like most people don't. Uh, including myself. I don't have robot-like reflexes. I will uh, I will take a little bit of damage in between my, pressing my 2 button. Now, Bone Widow has a way to restore health. So she has a little bit more um, like longevity built in with her. Um, but her invulnerability is a little bit weaker. It's directional. Uh, she can't immediately press it when it goes down. She has a 10-second wait to press that button again. Yes, she can restore health and leech health in that time. But she can die to burst damage because of it. So just keep that in mind. Both really good Necromex. And I think that was pretty much it. That's all I was going to show with uh, Bone Widow there. If you liked it, give it a like. Um, if you haven't subbed yet, consider subbing. Or tell me what I can do to earn your sub. And thanks so much, guys. Have a good day.